He threw 39 more punches. He was brilliantly accurate, connecting with half the punches that he threw. He painted Rachman with power punches, mostly set up by the jab. And in the end, he scored the huge combination, left hook, right cross, and knocked Rachman out. There you have it, total jabs. Lewis threw 111 jabs in just under four rounds, and that's the benchmark. When he throws 30, 30 jabs per round, you can't handle him. Rachman could not. Let's go to Larry Merchant with the heavyweight champ, Lennox Lewis. Thank you, Jim. Congratulations, Lennox. You came into the fight. Your opponent was bone dry. Did you notice anything right from the start? Well, I seen, I seen a little twinkle in his eye, you know? You know, plus I've been dreaming all week to change his name. Change his name from has, has been, the has been Rockman. His name's has been Rockman now. No, 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 Rock. How, how did you turn your anger at him for all of the taunts he's been making at you into a positive, no, man. No. into a positive for you? I didn't even hear the question. I'm sorry, Lennox. How did you turn... Congratulations. How, how did you turn all the anger that you had welling up in you because of the taunting, because of your own lackluster performance in Africa, into this positive? I, I just stayed focused. You know, when, when we were in South Africa, yeah, uh, I said that belts were on loan. So he's had his 15 minutes of glory. Now they come back home to me. Do you acknowledge now that you didn't give your absolute best effort? You didn't take him seriously in Africa? Well, you know what? I didn't take him serious enough. I was in good shape in Africa. But, you know, one punch, he got through with one punch when it was, I, was, I was a little not focused in that, that, uh, that, that fight. And he got through with a great punch. We're in, we're in the heavyweight business. You can end things in one punch. Why did you hide out in your dressing room tonight? You seemed like you were just what? In your own zone and you just were focused on what was going to happen? Yeah, I was very focused. I didn't want to get into the hoopla. I was just showing the world that I was focused. They couldn't see too much of me. Even Rockman wanted to come in and see what I was doing. He was nervous. So he was outside my dressing room. I was laughing. Madiba! Yeah, right. big up South Africa. The, fir the first few rounds, Winnie. you describe yes. what you were doing in the first few rounds. Your jab seemed more authoritative than we've ever seen it. You, you stayed away from his right hand. Was that the plan? Yeah, just to give him some movement. He couldn't take, he couldn't take the movement. And, you know, I, I just showed him a different style. I told you, I can switch any style I want to. And, and this time I just showed him a different, different style of moving. All right, let's go now to the Jamea, fourth. Up, let's go to the fourth oh, round. And take a look at the knockout. You tell us what you saw. Emmanuel told you in the corner you can be more aggressive. What did you see? Well, I notice every time I try and reach around him with a hook, he sticks his arms out. And more time, he's watching out for the straight right hand. So I kind of turned it around on him and threw a, a, a roundhouse right hand. Emmanuel Stewart also said to you, look, this man doesn't counterpunch. You can attack him. Yeah, I, you know, I, I took I took some of the pressure to him. You know, gave him a, a lot of things to think about. Kitchen of Waterloo, big up. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? Huh? What you say? I'm, I'm just bigging him up, bigging up all these places. Miami, big up. All right, down British League. It was spec yes. it was speculated before this fight and reasonably that you had been knocked out by this man and that you would be conscious of that in this fight. How did you express that? Well, I definitely wasn't gun shy, you know, plus I wanted to knock him out in the, in the fourth round a little quicker than he knocked me out. So, you know, in a sense, I got my up on him. Do you feel that any of his pre-fight antics from the fight at the ESPN uh, uh, publicity tour to all of the stuff that was going on uh, helped you in any way? Yeah, it did. Those things really helped me. You know, I showed a lot of disrespect there, and I just, I just was uh, keeping all these things inside me. I said, okay, you're going to pay fight time, and you know, this is where he paid for it. Thank you very much. But now, now talk to us about your future. There are a number of fighters out there who you could fight. Whether it's a, a Tyson Bird, who is a. Uh, uh, um, a, a number one ranked fighter. It could be your countryman, Kirk Johnson. It could be Vladimir Klitschko. Where do you want to go? You know, I want Tyson. 
definitely want Tyson, you know. Every, I've been waiting for him since after the Holyfield fight, but it doesn't really matter to me. I'll take whoever. You know, Ocean's Eleven is coming up, and uh, I was fighting a guy named Magnovich on, on, uh, on, t on screen, so that fight may come around. There's Bird out there. There's enough guys out there, but, you know, whoever, whoever. How satisfying is this? fight for you compared to anything else that's happened in your career? It's very satisfying for me because, you know, a lot of people had me count out. They said I was too old. They said this may wreck my uh, my future. Uh, you know, I'm really happy about it. You know, I, I knew what I wanted to do, what I was going to go out there and do, and I went out and did it. Thank you very much, Lennox. Congratulations well, again.